Hi, so here's a question for Hannah. Hannah says, I'd really appreciate a video on trigger proofing and keeping recovered for life, the later stages of recovery and neural rewiring. My body is 110% there. I've had to buy new clothes, my periods is back and everything, but at times it feels like my brain is still where it was six months ago. It's mostly comparing to other people, permission to eat and stuff like that. Um, I'm working on it, but it feels like I'm making progress as a snail's place and it's frustrating because I'm so done with this eating disorder brain and I want to be rid of it. I don't think about food all the time anymore, but whenever it comes to food meal times, I'm still hyper vigilant about what everyone else is eating and working hard to train my brain out of that. But it feels like it's going to be forever. So I did write a couple of books on your rewiring. I'm not going to regurgitate them all right now, but what I am going to say is your brain is a product of what you create it to be. There's nothing that our brains do that our brains just decide, oh, you know what? I'm just going to fuck around. I'm just going to start doing this thing to piss my human off. It doesn't work like that, although a lot of the time it feels like that's exactly what's happening. But so if your brain is doing anything that annoys the crap out of you, being hypervigilant around food, if you've still got some food rules that are going on, whatever it is, I can guarantee you that you are reinforcing that behavior somehow. You're reinforcing, you're, you're teaching, you're still actively teaching your brain to be like that. So it may be that when your brain starts to be hypervigilant around food, you are the one that is then dwelling on those thought patterns and sort of reinforcing it and letting yourself look back again at that person's plate another time just to check how much they've eaten. In doing that, you're reinforcing that your brain should be hypervigilant about what other people are eating, if you see what I mean. If the next day you start thinking about what people ate last night and you allow yourself to go into those thought processes and sort of dwell in them, then by doing so, by paying that mental attention to that thought process, you're reinforcing to your brain that that thought process is important to you. Uh, calorie counting is, an, is a normal one. You know, if your brain is obsessed about calories, it's only doing that, it is doing that because you've taught it that calories are super important. And if you're going through recovery and you've been at it for a while and that doesn't seem to be changing, you have to look at, well, how am I actually still reinforcing to my brain the idea that calories are super important? And I know it's, I know it can be tiring and I know it can seem like, well, every single thing that I do actually is disordered, so I have to change everything. And it's kind of like, yeah, exactly, you do actually, you do have to become very aware of all of your thoughts, everything you're doing, all of your actions. And what you really need to do is you have to have a vision in your head about what you want your brain to behave like. And then with that, you've then got to act like that. So if you don't want a brain that obsesses over calories, as soon as your brain starts kicking off on calories, you have to pull yourself out of that and be like, nope, this is, I am not a person who gives a fuck about calories. I'm not going to. If you don't want a brain that's hypervigilant about what everybody else is eating, then you have to, when your brain starts to pull your attention to what everybody else is eating, be like, nope, not, don't give a fuck, don't give a fuck. I'm actually just going to eat even more just to check that I'm eating more than everyone else. Do you see what I mean? If it's going at a snail's pace, then... Mm, that's because you're going at a snail's pace with it. And I'm not trying to sound harsh with that. I'm not trying to blame you. I'm just telling you like it is that you're, I, I can probably like really accurately guess that there's nothing actually wrong with your brain. It's going to always be a training issue. It is a training issue. Our brains learn really fast. Your brain is only ever trying to be helpful. And so if your brain is doing something that's annoying you, you have to look at how you are reinforcing the idea to your brain that that thing is helpful for you and that it should keep doing it. Because your brain's a bit like a really trainable, very good dog <laughs> that is just like completely focused on you. You know how like border collies, sheep dogs, you know how they're just like at their owner, they're just like, <laughs> they're just like looking at you the whole time. Like, what am I going to, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? I'll do anything. I'll do anything for you. What do you want me to do? Your brain's a bit like that. And so if that's the thing about like border collies and training sheepdogs, you have to be very, very good trainer, dog trainer, because if you just, I don't know, accidentally do something, then a dog thinks it's meant to do that, and then you've just fucked up its training for it ever, and then you need to get another trainer that's actually good at training dogs to come in and undo it. <laughs> Not quite like that, but you see what I mean? Your brain is just always watching, always watching everything. Like, what, what, what should I do? What are we doing, human? What are we doing? What are we doing? How can I help you? And... So if it's doing something, it's just doing that because you have inadvertently trained it that that's what you want it to do. And this is what neural rewiring is all about, basically. It's just training your brain 
But have that picture in your brain. Have a picture in your brain. Have a picture in your head of what you want your brain to act like. And then start acting like that. And no, that sounds overly simplistic, but that's basically it. All right, bye.